Welcome to Moving Between Operator Families. It's not uncommon in Touch Designer to need to convert between operator families, so let's take a quick look at all the ways that we can do just that. To get started, let's go ahead and create a circle top here in our network. Now, if we wanted to convert this circle top to say a channel operator, we can right click on the output, head over to chops, and select the top to chop as a way to move our data from being inside of a texture operator to being represented as channels. We might also want to think about how we can represent our texture operators as surfaces. So let's start by adding a movie file in top here. I'm going to change which image I'm looking at. I'm going to go ahead and swap to say the butterfly. I'm going to right click on the output of my movie file in and select the trace surface operator. Now this is going to go ahead and give me uh, a surface operator that's a representation of what's inside of my movie file in where the alpha or the transparent parts of my image are cut out. Now one of the interesting things that a trace op will do is we can see if we connect this to a geometry component and add say a fong material is the trace will actually apply the UV coordinates appropriately to our surface. So let's go ahead and set our movie file in as our color map on our phone and apply this material to our geometry. And we'll see that our UVs are correctly mapped to our geometry, which is really helpful. We might also think about how we want to convert, say, channel operators to other families. Let's go ahead and add a constant chop here to our network. Now I'm going to add three channels here. I'm going to call one RG and another B. So we've got, for example, here, a channel for red, green, and blue. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on the output, move over to our texture operators and select chop two. Now, if we go ahead here on our constant and say, turn up our first channel to one, we'll see that the first pixel in our chop two top lights up. And we'll see this better if we make our uh, top viewer active and select display pixel values. And here we can better see just single pixels. So here we have a pixel per channel. And in this case, our first pixel is white, which ma matches the value that's coming from our first channel. Now we can see that's the case because our data format is set to R or just the uh, R channel, a monochrome representation here of what we have from our chops. If we change this to say RGB, we'll instead have one pixel where each channel contributes to the values of that single pixel. Let's take a look at how we might say convert what's in a channel operator to be inside of something like a surface operator. We can start with a noise chop here. And from our noise chop, we're gonna add a few extra channels. So I'm gonna do one for T, X, Y, and Z. I'm going to right click on the output of our noise and I'm going to select a limit SOP. Now the limit SOP needs to understand, we need some way to describe for the limit SOP which channels correspond to which attributes for our geometry. So we can go ahead and select TX, TY, and TZ to be the XY and Z channels. Now what we end up with is a piece of geometry whose positions are defined by the values of the channels that are feeding them. Let's take a look at another example. Let's add a line SOP here to our network. And let's think about, I just wanna add a curve say to this line SOP. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to a CHOP2 already so we can have a few things hooked up. Next, I'm gonna grab a pattern CHOP. Now our pattern CHOP is only gonna describe what's happening in the TY uh, position of our geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to be TY. I'm also going to head over to the pattern page. I'm going to grab length and I want to make sure that both my line SOP and my pattern share the same number of points. So I'm going to go ahead and set reference here. So now we'll have a thousand points in our line and we have a thousand samples in our pattern. I'm going to right click add a null here to my pattern chop and I'm going to drag that right onto my chop too. Now we'll see that the Y position that's represented inside of our uh, pattern chop is what's actually driving the Y values for our geometry. What else can we do here? We might also think about wanting to see say what's in a pattern chop represented in say a table and if we right click on the output of our pattern and head over to DATS 
we can actually do a chop to dat. And here what we'll see is that we have a row for every single sample that we have inside of our pattern chop. In fact, if we turn this down to say even just like 10, we'll see now that we have 10 rows where each row corresponds to a different sample inside of our pattern chop. Now that's not it. There's lots more we can do, of course. So let's also take a look at how we can think about something like say a, a single point that we have inside of a piece of geometry. And I'm going to add a point here. So I have one point that's just zero, zero, zero. And maybe I want to see that represented in chops. And sure enough, I can do that. Here we have a uh, channel for each of the attributes. So a TX, TY, TZ uh, for our point here. And we'll see that if we move our point left or right, that sure enough, our SOP2 chop updates. Of course, we can do a lot more than that. If we were to say, uh, maybe grab a circle SOP, we can also convert that into chop data with a SOP2 chop. And here we'll have a channel for each of the attributes, TX, TY, TZ. And we have a sample for each uh, vertex or each point that we have inside of our circle. If we make our SOP2 viewer active and hit the D key on our keyboard, we can actually better see how there is a sample for each one of the points that exists inside of our circle. And in fact, if I make my circle viewer active and go ahead and turn on display options and take a look at the points here, we can see that a little bit better. We might also think about how we want to represent what's inside of our surface operators as, uh, as a single spreadsheet, perhaps. So let's go ahead and again, add a circle SOP. And let's take a look at how we might convert that to say a DAT. Here we can use a SOP to DAT. And now we get something that's similar to a geometry spreadsheet, right? We have a table that uh, represents all of the different data that's inside of our circle SOP. Finally, we can think about how we convert the information that's inside of DATs to something that's inside of other operators. So let's go ahead and add a table here to our network. And I'm going to say, add just like uh, a first column here that's called apple. And I'll add another column after that and put a value in it. If we right click on the output, head over to chops and use the dat, dat2 chop, we can see that we get a channel whose name matches the uh, first entry in the first column and whose value represents what's in our second column. This is just a, some of the ways that we can think about converting operators between different families. And we'll take a closer look at what we can do with this powerhouse uh, idea of converting data in some other videos. But this is just a quick overview of how we can begin to think about that idea.